Hi, my name is James Shepard. I'm an independent agent with North American Bank Card, and I'm also building a sales team for North American Bank Card. And uh, I've made several videos, uh, some introduction videos that you can watch about credit card processing and also compensation, how you get paid. Uh, now we're moving on to how to sell it, um, how to be a sales agent. And um, as you all know, there are um, several different types of leads that you can get as a sales agent. Um, first of all, you can get appointment set uh, leads where a telemarketer calls ahead and sets an appointment and says, you know, Joe is going to be there at 3.30 on Tuesday and they set an appointment for you. Some of you that have been with processors such as Apex Merchant Group, um, you've gotten those appointment set leads. And uh, those leads really are not that good uh, for a lot of reasons. One of them, one of the biggest problems that I had with those leads was that when I went into a merchant's location, they knew I was coming and they knew that I was a sales rep. And you know what, those are two things that I don't necessarily like for the business owner to know ahead of time. Um, also, when I go into the merchant's location, I'm going in completely blind. I have no idea who they're using. I have no idea if they're happy with their current processor. I have no idea if they're happy with their pricing. I don't know what type of machine they use. I don't know anything about the merchant. So I'm going in cold turkey. I don't like that. Um, those are the two main things I don't like. And then, of course, the other problem is a lot of times you go in and you waste your time because the appointment set lead really wasn't an appointment set lead in the first place. Now, the other type of lead you can get is actually a lead, someone that calls in that's interested. Um, those are great. Um, the only problem with those is that they are expensive. Um, I am, uh, my background is in marketing and sales, and uh, I've been a marketing manager for a large company. And if you want to get leads, whether it's on the internet, uh, you will find that the pay-per-click price for words such as merchant services or credit card processing extremely high. You're going to pay about 2 to $4 per click. Um, so it's going to cost you a lot of money. If you want to get a lead, it's going to cost you 100 bucks, 200 bucks to get a real quality lead that you're going to sell, uh, whether it be online, if you want to send out postcards, that's very expensive. So uh, the type of prospecting that I do is very cheap. Uh, I actually just go into businesses and I sell them. Um, I close at right around 60% of the people that I talk to. And um, if you don't uh, believe that, uh, that's fine. You can look at my sales numbers. I do close about 60% of the people that I talk to. They're small business owners. I'm going to explain exactly how I do that step by step. And I think if you try it, you'll have some pretty good results yourself. Um, I'm very much into sales. I love sales. I read sales books constantly. done a lot of sales training. And I uh, want to share a little bit of how I sell credit card processing services with you. First of all, prospecting. Uh, when I prospect, the most effective way that I found a prospect uh, is I simply go down the street and I go into businesses, uh, businesses that take credit card. Now, uh, with credit card processing, you're going to want to stay away from places that are nationwide uh, chains, um, large corporate chains, things like that, um, for a couple reasons. Number one, they're very difficult to sell. Uh, if you sell them, you're going to have to probably fly to New York or something like that to sell them. And even if you did, you don't really have the manpower to, uh, to do the installations. Also, if you sold just one of those very large chains, you'll find out that their markup is so low that it's actually not really worth your time as an independent agent to sell just one of those. You'd be better off selling a small business that does $20,000 a month than you would selling a large store that does a uh, million dollars a month. In most cases, it, the markup is, is surprisingly about the same. Um, so you want to steer clear of those. You're looking for small to medium-sized businesses, retail stores, restaurants especially are great, um, businesses, specialty shops, specialty services, uh, places like that. You just drive down the road and you see them. Those are the type of places uh, that you want to sell. I'll give you an example of the, the last few that I sold. Um, I sold a pizza chain that had five locations uh, locally. I sold a uh, company called, uh, well, I'll say it's a glass company. Um, they do glass repair. It's a retail location. People bring their broken windows in and they repair them. Um, I sold uh, another restaurant um, that uh, is just a small restaurant. I sold a large um, standalone uh, Chinese buffet. They do about $100,000 a month. Um, so that's some different types of businesses, clothing stores, consignment shops. Uh, retail stores, all those are places I've sold in the last six months. Those are good leads that you want to be looking for. Um, you want to stop in and you want to go in and simply, this is what I always say when I go in. First of all, don't ever ask for the owner or the manager. You're going to find out that there are so many salespeople out there selling so many different things that people in a retail uh, location, 
um, they are very familiar with salespeople. And if you come in and say, uh, is the owner available, is the manager available, you might get them, but when they come out, they're going to have their guard up, and that's not really what you want. Um, what I do is, when I go in, I actually want to get some information from the people that are there before I talk with the owner in case the owner is not there. So I introduce myself. I say my name is James Shepard. I'm an independent agent with North American Bank Card. Um, and then I say I do the credit card processing for, and then I name a business that's nearby them or could be uh, just the closest business I can think of to them. And uh, I say the name of that business. And I say, uh, what I, I'm just wondering, who does your credit card processing? Now, when you ask that question, who does your credit card processing, one of two things will happen. The person you're speaking to will either know the answer to that question, and if they do, they will talk to you about it. You would be shocked at how many times a worker in the business will say, oh, we have the bank does it, or First Data does it, or whatever, and we hate them, they do a terrible job, um, we don't like them at all, and, and you would be shocked how many times that's going to happen for you when you just ask that question. Um, then once they uh, get done, you're talking about it, um, then you just at some point in the conversation could say, now who would I speak to about that? When you say that, who would I speak to about that? After you've spoken to them about the machine that they're using, ask them questions about the processor if they know, they'll get you somebody. Um, or the other thing that could happen is they might have no idea about the processor, they could be a new worker, they don't have a clue, but you treated them with respect. You assume that they could be the owner, they could be the manager, you've treated them with respect and dignity, and they're going to go find their manager or owner and say, hey, there's some guy out here, he's asking me questions, I don't know how to answer him. That is what I want. I'd rather have the owner coming out thinking there's some guy out here asking a bunch of questions rather than a salesman just walked in and asked for the owner or manager. You see my point? I'd rather have the owner come out thinking, I wonder what this is about, rather than coming out saying, here is someone who is about to try and sell me. Um, so that's the first stage is prospecting. Now, with prospecting, I spend a lot of time. Um, I'm not a crusher salesman. I don't mind taking a while. Many of my sales, I take a month to make my sale, and that's fine because that's why I close at 60%. I don't push someone to make a decision until I know the decision is going to be yes, or if I know the decision is going to be no, I don't follow up with them. Um, but I'll explain more about that in the next segment. But in prospecting, it's very important to understand. I'll come in and say, um, you know, uh, talk to them about their processor, and they might say, yeah, you know what, the owner's not in here. And I'll say, oh, what's the owner's name? His name's Bob. When is he going to be in? Bob's usually here Thursday afternoons. Okay, great. I don't try to set an appointment. I never do that. You don't really need to set an appointment unless you're talking to the owner and you need to set up a follow-up appointment. But they're small business owners. They don't have a, a schedule. In other words, no matter what time you come in, it could be busy and you might have to come back another time, and that's fine. But you just know the business owner's name. You know a little bit about the processor. You know if they like the machine that they're using. You know some basic information. And you know that they're normally there Thursday afternoons around 2-ish. So next Thursday, you can come back around 2 and ask for Bob, and you might catch him there. Uh, so that's how I do my prospecting. It's pretty simple. I just go into businesses. I introduce myself. I'm James Shepard, North American Bank Card. I'm an independent agent. I do the credit card processing for such and such a business. And I just wanted to find out who you use for your credit card processing. Um, they'll give me the information uh, that they can. Then I will ask who deals with that. And if the owner is there, he'll come out and talk with me. If the owner is not there, I'll ask the owner's name, when the best time is to reach him. And I'll get several times. They might say, he's here Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. That's great. Don't set yourself in for solid appointments because you're going you're gonna to need some f flexibility in your scheduling uh, when you're doing a lot of sales because sometimes the business owner, you'll go in someplace, you'll need to be there for an hour because they actually want to sign up. Other times you'll go and the business owner forgot you were coming and you're there for for 30 seconds and you got to leave. So it's nice if you have some flexibility. So find as many available times as you can when the business owner will be available. Write those down in your schedule and follow up with him uh, at another time. Uh, watch the next video and I will talk about the next step in the process, speaking with the owner and getting some commitment.